Alrighty, today we're looking at USD in Unreal. Uh, I'm using 4.27 just because there's uh, 4.27 has a bit more USD updates than even the preview version of Unreal 5, so that's what we're using. Now I thought I'd start with like a... <sighs> My original plan was because Pixar had made a USD version of the, uh, the island from Moana or the Moana trailer um, available as USD, so I thought I'd try getting that into Unreal, but that, uh, is, uh, not very good. That, di that didn't work out very well. Um, it, it's sort of very laggy. I didn't even end up importing at all, so, uh, unless you have, like, 512 gigabytes of RAM in your system, or maybe even more, uh, this really isn't an option. <laughs> um, a cool idea, but yes, uh, not quite uh, good. N sorry, not qu Unreal's not quite good enough for this, but it was worth a try. So uh, I'll be using some not as intense USDs for this example. Um, I had a difficult time. Oh, I had a difficult time finding USDs that I sort of liked that would work for this. Um, so the I what I ended up using is will be uh, the Attic USD that Nvidia makes available, and uh, for their Omniverse, but it's in a USD format, so we can use it in here instead. As well as I've exported a couple of Blender scenes, uh, just the demo files Blender comes with uh, out as USD, and be using those as well. So let's jump into a less laggy project. <laughs> Alrighty, we're in a blank Unreal Games project, the blankest of blank starts, uh, and what you want to first do is make sure the USD importer plugin is enabled, I've done that here, um, otherwise we can get started. Uh, so I think first I will demonstrate, so there are two ways you can use USD, we can either import them into Unreal, um, which has its benefits, um, or we can read the USD live which also has its benefits, and both have cons as well. So I think first of all, I'm going to show you how to import it, straight up import it. So I'm going to use this blank scene, delete that, that, that. Alrighty, next what I want to do is create a new folder. So this method for importing directly, you need to make a folder to store the assets in. I'm going to call this folder um, arcviz. So I'm going to use the Italian flat demo file from Blender. So what we want to do is we want to go file, then import into level. Now, as you can see, under all files, we now have Universal Scene Descriptor as an option. Now, if I go ahead to the USD, oh no, here, USD Tutorials, Test Scenes, as you can see how many different ones I've seen. So this one, we're going to select our USD, choose where we want to save the content, and then we're greeted with this dialogue. Now we have a few options. We have what data to import. Um, the purpose is to import, so if your USD has set up to have different sort of like proxy meshes and render meshes that are only shown, if you're doing that, then you can set that here. That's all good. Uh, we don't have that set up. We have some collision options for game stuff. Um, we also have whether we want the path, so this folder to replicate the USD file structure, or if we want it to simply be like materials, textures, and models instead. Uh, collapse assets and components is something that you may want to turn off. I've found sometimes it'll combine objects and then you sort of lose materials. So where there's an object, you might have three separate objects, it might combine that into one object with only one material when that's ticked. So you can untick that if you'd like to prevent that from happening. Now we're going to head and hit import and this process will take a little bit of time. Alrighty, and just like that we now have the Italian flat from Blender inside Unreal. Go in and now obviously uh, setting up your, I guess, setting up I don't know, he, so you see like flickering on the walls and a few other issues and it just doesn't look that fantastic. That's because th this was never designed to run in Blender or real time. Um, you know, this was made in a path tracing engine cycles yeah, with all these sort of 
bits and bobs. So what we end up with is a less than ideal replication of it in Unreal. And this is where importing it um, can sort of be handy is because we can then go through and we can edit these objects nice and easily. I can go through change <clears throat> change all these lights to movable, for example, to use ray tracing. Um, we can edit materials and edit objects nice and easy. And they're all in this folder here, arch fears. There we go, materials, static meshes, textures. You know, we can go through and edit meshes. Um, I did not turn on instances in this USD file, so we've got a lot of um, unnecessary files there. <laughs> Probably should have done that when I exported the USD, but that's not an Unreal issue, that's a exporting USD issue. <clears throat> and so here's the benefit with that. The downside to this is there's no way to re-import it. So if, uh, if for example, you're using sort of very, um, the ideal workflow of USD, which is like, you know, you go back and forward and all this sort of stuff, uh, then this method it uh, doesn't really fit in with that. Um, what you end up with is sort of this hard-baked uh, result, I guess. Um, and there's no way, unless I individually import all these different meshes and all the different textures, you know, I can't just grab a new USD of this scene and import it. And so that's where the big issue is. So this method works nice as just using USD to transfer scenes from say Blender or Maya or Houdini into Unreal for your game I guess. Um, I, this probably doesn't have as much use in the film industry I don't think. Um, that being said this scene because it was made for a path trace it does actually look really good in Blender, uh, Blender pff, Unreal's path tracer like that. So it ends up pretty good in the end. Now, what is the other method of using USD? Um, and that is the sort of method of, um, I'm going to save this, I'm going to call it flat. Um, so what is the method you're supposed to use USD? At least the method Pixar envisions you use USD and probably the way you, most people might be using USD in their pipeline. Well, if I go ahead to this uh, empty level, I'm going to show you. So if we search in the content browser for USD, then we get this USD stage actor. Now I can drag and drop that in and we can have a look at it. So we have this thing called root layer, initial load set, purpose to load, render context, time and level sequence. Now, first of all, you may notice there's no drop down on this level sequence. Oh, and then asset cache. Um, there's no drop down because this actually creates a level sequence, not receives it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch this to rent render there we go and so what we can do is we can specify a usd here all right so what we're going to do is go ahead and choose a usd uh in this case i'm going to be choosing the attic scene the video provides so i'm going to go ahead and double click on it and wait for it to load Alrighty, that's done loading it was actually pretty quick so now as you can see we have a scene in here now uh if we have a look at the content browser uh, or the world outliner sorry uh, you may notice this looks familiar these all have little lightning bolts next to them and that's because this is uh, basically these are all spawned by the UST stage actor pretty nifty so basically I can just get change the USD and all of these will disappear. Um, so this is reading the USD live. So if there are changes made to it, I can load up a new USD file and it'll grab all those changes. Now it is brought across the camera from the scene, as you can see, as well as lighting. Although that's not looking that crash hot in this scene at the moment, but we can fix that. Uh, I'm gonna switch everything to movable again as well. That one and that one. I'm gonna change this down to five lux. Uh, and then the dome light, I'm going to switch to a SLS specific cube map and enable the engine content. There we go. And go ahead and grab just sort of this daylight ambient cube map. Maybe turn it down a little bit. A little bit more. There we go. That's looking a bit better. So this is the other way to get USD working. Um, and it's sort of very 
modular, mobile, I guess. Um, however, this has some cons. Mainly, these assets don't exist in the content browser anywhere. So if I like, I hit browse to, it just takes me nowhere. Um, which is a bit of an can be a bit of an issue. So um, if we want to make changes to these, um, we could. Um, here we go. Here's the USD preview surface. Um, we can make changes to these um, pretty easily. Uh, however, the issue then is uh, we can't really save them, I guess. Um, for example, if this, uh, we change this chest, we get rid of it. Let's um, go ahead and like grab this material and I don't know, make it opaque or something, I guess, um, use metallic texture. I'm trying to, f we change the texture of it. I change it to this little guy. All right, so that has worked, but say someone down the line gives us a new USD, hey, they changed the shot or the camera's different or something. We go ahead and we load up that new USD. Now our lighting is reset. The model we got, got deleted has been reset and the textures are reset as well. So I'm going to have to go ahead and change this back to five so we can see what we're doing. It's clicked about a hundred times. There we go. And this back to specific cube map and ambient cube map. I can go to 2.25. There you go. And so our textures have reset as well. And so that's the biggest um, downside, I guess, to this method is that uh, any changes you do within the Unreal space will not be saved. Now, that's not to say you can't do anything at all. Uh, we can definitely, we can put a post process in, we can save this, we can develop, uh, you know, settings for Unreal and all that sort of stuff for that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, um, probably a few other things, you know, we can put stuff in here. However, anything related to the USD is not going to save. Um, so I'll call this like attic. Um, you know, so a... That is probably the biggest downside to this particular method, but then it has all the upsides of, uh, you know, the live workflow with USD for, you know, we're reading back and we can change quickly when we get sent updates and all that sort of stuff. So I guess that's something you need to evaluate with your project at the time is like, you know, which, which way do we go, I guess. Alrighty, another few uh, tips for the USD stage viewer while we're here. Obviously, we have file, we can hit load, we can save this out as a new USD, um, which could be handy um, if we do make some changes. Uh, so that is an option. Uh, we can open a new USD file, we can just create a new layer for this USD folder, we can close this USD. Um, we also, under actions, have the import option, and this will basically be the same as the file import into level. Uh, lastly, we have some options for payload. So if we want to load none initially, uh, purpose to load, render context, selection, all that sort of stuff, uh, which is pretty handy. Um, so the last thing we want to have a look at is animation. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make a new level again. Now, I could not find a decent USD file to use uh, for animation. Um, I made one with uh, Blender's Hello, or oh, Hi, My Name's Amy, I think the, is the name of it, uh, animation example. Uh, however, it sometimes creates a spaghetti monster. Um, so hopefully we don't get that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import it the same way we did before with the USD stage actor. Reset. So if I go like window, USD stage, we can do it through this if we want instead. We can go open. Uh, back out one more and restaurant. Gonna load up and just like that we have. Now I th I think um it comes in weirdly because of the way Blender uh, exports USDs. Um, however she's missing uh sections of her face for some reason. Um, as well as like some things like the pen and the name tag uh, don't follow and there's no textures in the background here. However, this will give us, a, this This is still a good example of animated USDs. So I've imported that and 
as you can see, the level sequence section here has been populated with something. Um, now, again, that doesn't exist anywhere, but if we double click it, we can open it up in Sequencer. And sure enough, I can hit play, and we have the pretty smooth and decent animation from... Well, it's better than decent. It's a lot better animation than I could ever hope to do. Uh, however, we get the um, restaurant animation. And as you can see, we can go through, and then we've got all sorts of transforms and stuff like that. But, and it's playing pretty decently, it's playing really nicely in Unreal here. So, uh, here, that is how you get uh, USD, animated USDs in. It just works, which is really cool. And it automatically creates us a sequence and all that. Now, if we import this USD, it also gives us an animated sequence in here that we can go ahead and then edit. Um, although you can edit this, we can go ahead go ahead and um one thing is they don't seem to add the camera to this sequence so the camera is definitely something uh you would want to add um blender doesn't seem to bring the camera through correctly um it also if you have a look at the film back has a huge sensor uh i don't believe three meter sensors exist um and then it also gave us there we go and that was not really necessary but uh there you go so now if i play it it looks there you go so you know we do have uh you know usd like that um now one thing is uh for some reason uh, you may think like importing this way is a good idea however some issues arise because for some reason at least in this example I can't say if it's for every example uh, she turns into a spaghetti monster so if I go ahead and import this as an example uh, so we're going to go to the stage actor actions import I'm going to use the Arcviz folder that's don't do that that's bad but uh that's bad practices but i'm going to do it for the sake of the tutorial um so i'm going to import it and she turns into this um i have noticed animations from streaming the usd content versus animations from uh, uh animations from streaming usds versus animations from importing usds are in fact um different um that was playing back fine as a streamed in usd and now it's nothing as an imported one um no idea why um at the moment i recommend if you've got any animation as what well, at all keep it as a streamed usd because <laughs> yeah um, the, about the only thing I've noticed that imports correctly through USD animated is camera moves, which this camera didn't have a move on. So, hopefully you don't end up with spaghetti monsters, but I hope this was helpful. Uh, I'm going to be doing a second part on exporting USDs out of Unreal, at least non-animated versions. Uh, animated versions are going to come even later in a previous tutorial. Um, which should be good. Uh, however, hopefully you found this useful. Um, feel free. I'll link in the description where I got all my USDs from. Uh, so you can try it. Uh, go ahead and hop over to the Patreon if you want this project file. And try it out yourself as well. But thank you for watching.